Oh, right there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Mimic TCG. I'm your host, Matt. Before we get into Golgari Land Destruction, I just want to say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all those things. If you want to. If you don't want to, then <laughs> I okay, that's fine. <laughs> won't be insulted. Just cry myself to sleep. I won't. Don't worry. It's fine. Um, so. I'm just going to do a little discussion about Golgari land destruction. A deck I came across recently. I think I'm a little bit late to discover this. Discover to uh, have found this this deck. Uh, I think it's probably a, a bit over a month old now. Um, you, you probably initial assumption is, oh, Carnage Tyrant at the top end. That's sort of a bit. A bit old meta but this this deck is or oh, it has been designed to combat the super friends heavy decks um mainly the ones sort of around what's his name sarkin uh where is et not fireblood but there we go sarkin the masterless um you know the decks that are running the the sahili the chandras all the walkers and they punch you in the face because Sarkin turns all the planes of into dragons and kills you dead. <laughs> also, to combat control heavy decks, um, uh, the reason for this is, or well, the reason, uh, the reason this is effective is because those decks don't run basic lands or they don't run that many basic lands because they're they're being greedy. <laughs> they're in uh, three colors. Uh, maybe four, who knows? Um, and so the, the idea is uh, we've got the the assassins trophies, you can just destroy non basic lands. Um, uh, we also have casualties of war for that, and also field of ruin. So we can we can kind of go turn to blow up a non basic land uh, if they haven't got a replacement. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, then we can also turn turn three, Field of Ruin, uh, and then later in the game, obviously Casualties of War, just a six drop. It's expensive, but we can get rid of an artifact creature, an enchantment, a land, planeswalker, all of those. Um, yeah, and also we you know could be drawing into more Assassin's Trophies. So it could be like turn two, blah blah land, turn three, blah blah land, turn four, blah blah land, etc. etc. A little bit of ramp. Uh, Ladder Elves and Paradise Druid, um, which you know, good little ramp pack, which is which is which is fine. A turn to Jade Light Ranger. No one in their right mind is going to complain about paying uh, about playing Jade Light Ranger on turn two. If you complain about that, you're mad. <laughs> um, so the other things we're running are the Merfolk Branch Walker. Wildgrowth Walker, obviously Jedi Ranger kind of package thing, uh, because that's still quite effective. A um, little bit of life gain against those new, very numerous aggro decks. That's always nice. Um, that feels like a very solid way to run this deck. Um, it helps us to filter for what we need. I'm going to use the word filter there. Um, but the Explorer is still I like exploring. Uh, it's good. Uh, <laughs> I've never really played a Wild Growth Walker deck. I wouldn't. Well, this is a Wild Growth Walker deck, I suppose. Um, and I've, I've never played one, so <laughs> it's be interesting to see. Uh, we then sort of, you know, jump up to our four drops with the Ravenous Chupacabra to help us deal with uh, creature creature decks. Um, I mean, a two, two for four, meh. But it's kills. It's a, you know, it's a creature destruction on, on a stick, which is great. Uh, who doesn't love that? Um, we then are running a Raska Golgari Queen. Um, I, you know, we can gain some, gain some card draw off of her. And I mean, if we we don't need, we play Chip Carver. It does what it needs to do. We can. Get rid of it or whatever, or any of these things. Um, we can also destroy non land permanent with convert mana cost three or less. Helps us with those, um, again, aggro decks. Sort of 
it kind of makes sense that she's in there. I think, I think uh, Vraska Golgari Queen has uh, has multiple uses. Well, you'll you'll never get up to nine. <laughs> um, I would very much doubt it anyway. You never know, but I uh, can't really see that happening too much. Uh, then we are hopping over to our five drops. I'll discuss Massacre Girl in a minute. Uh, we've got the three Vivian Reed. Um, I pretty much just copied this deck list. <laughs> and I just wanted to discuss it and sort of play it because uh, well, Golgari's been. I love Golgari um, decks. I've done for a long time, but I haven't actually played Golgari since, wow. Well, a long time ago. Um, so I'm kind of keen. But anyway, three Vivian Reed. Uh, again, she lets us, lets us uh, dig through our library a bit um, for what we need, whether that's light, whether that's land, or which I mean, if we've, we've played a, if we're on five land, <laughs> we're probably not looking for land. Um, I mean, we might do. We might need that sixth. We might be struggling uh, again. So. She, she's there for for that, and also to destroy creatures with flying uh, is the main reason, I believe, because we're going to struggle against that. There's lots of flying dudes around, which you know, it's fair play. You know, uh, three. I, I'm just not sure that three three seems three seems a lot. I don't know. I could I could be completely wrong. I'm probably wrong. The people who built this deck took it to a what did they take it to? I don't know. A big money tournament. So, <laughs> you know what they're doing. Uh, we've got one Nissa. Uh, you know. Nissa, who shakes the world, is a good card. I am a huge fan. It gives us the ramp we need. You know, for our, our big, you know, running six, six drops. So, the extra man is good. It also means kind of, if we can cheat her out a little bit early with something like Lano Elves or Paradise Druid, which we're good as long as she stays on the board. We are hunky dory, um, and also Manans are great. <laughs> um, but then we've got Massacre Girl, essentially a board wipe um, for all defense purposes. And uh, I've seen some crazy stuff happen with Massacre Girl. She's good for just I just. I'm blown away by this card sometimes. <laughs> you can play after combat um, when damage is still on everything and shoop, everything goes. Uh, but it, yeah, we you know these the, the the red decks, the white decks, the blue decks. Maybe not so much mono blue, but they you know they have quite good. They have they have some good card card draw. So. But the decks that have gone dumping my hand, <laughs> we're going to win. No, because Massacre Girl, basically. Uh, we've then got the Three Carnage Tyrant. A lot of people's opinion of Carnage Tyrant um, is, eh, Carnage Tyrant, not relevant. Still very relevant. <laughs> Can't be counted. Trample and Hexproof. So there's three of those. Um, and then we've got three casualty of, Casualties of War. Um, as I said earlier, Choose one or more. You can do everything on that list. Just don't pick your own stuff. <laughs> don't. Well, you mean you can. Do what you want. <laughs> but um, Casualties of War is a great card. Um, especially if we've sort of cheated out Nyssa and we've got sort of like an overgrown tomb. And we're kind of going, oh no, don't quite have the mana for that. But oh look, we can tap overgrown tomb for. Um, uh, a swamp and a forest, all in one. Because there you go, uh, and then you can trigger this to untap it and do it again. So um, yeah, that's good. Uh, the lands are four swamp, eight forests, four evergreen tomb, four wooden cemetery, and as discussed, four foot of ruin, four land destruction. Now the sideboard. I feel like this deck would cope well as a best of one. Uh, but it is obviously designed for best of three. Uh, we've got in the sideboard here, we have. I'll run through the sideboard and then discuss what's what. For dress, two cast down, two moment of craving, 
two Elder Spout, one of Nixilis's Cruelty, two Thrashing Brontodon, one Crucible of Wilds, and one more Nissa who shakes the world. Duress. I would definitely put in uh, against uh, put in against Mono Red. Uh, take out the Lano Elves. Dies to everything in that deck. Dies to Chain Whirler. Paradise Dru Druid. Dies to Chain Whirler. Doesn't matter that it's got Hexproof if it's not tapped. Um, dies to Chain Whirler. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say over and over again. Uh, so Duress can come in uh, for like the Lano Elves or you know two Paradise Druid, two Lano Elves, whatever. Maybe keep it a little bit around if you. I, I, prob I probably wouldn't. Um, but also against the Super Friends decks, you could probably find space for Duress. Um, we've got lots of spot removal in the form of Cast Down, uh, Moment of Craving, and Obnixus's Cruelty. The obviously again, Cast Down, Moment of Craving comes in against Mono, Mono Red, Mono, Mono White, the, like the aggro decks. Um, Obnixus's Cruelty you can put in. Definitely um, against aggro decks, but I th uh, feel that's more in there for Phoenix decks. Exile the Phoenix. Um, ooh, are you going sideboard? Um, get onto the Elder spell here. Um, oh, I just wrote down the Elder spell. Elder spell. Okay, so Elder spell against. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Against the Super Friends decks. Take out Chupacabra, put in Elder Spell. Pretty, pretty, pretty simple, really. It's basically do the same thing, but for ones for creatures, ones for planeswalkers, and obviously we can buff our own planeswalkers with that uh, if if that's if we have them out. So that's that's quite a nice simple swap there. Uh, I imagine the Elder Spell is in the sideboard. Rather than the main board, because um, it's very specific. There's and there's too many aggro decks that have that as a main board card. Uh, too many decks that just don't run planeswalkers. Therefore, it would be a a dead card in hand. Um, now, thrashing brontodon uh, is a good choice. It's three four for three, which is above curve uh, anyway. And the, the some of the aggro decks will just they'll just the creatures will just bounce off it. Well, they'll, they'll just die to it. Um, however, it's it's there for getting rid of Conclave Tribunal more than anything else, uh, I think. Um, and things like uh, was it like the Elder Prison or whatever it's called? Not Elder Prison, Prison Realm and Ixlan's Binding. If people are still running that. Those sorts of things. Get rid of those those enchantments. Um, I'd also use it to get rid of maybe Experimental Frenzy because um, we have all seen and we've all felt and we've probably all played uh, Mono Red and just how insane, how ridiculous um, Experimental Frenzy can be. Um, so yeah, what, like, what you would take out for that I'm not sure. Uh, I'd probably lower the curve a little bit um, against against the uh, against the aggro decks, perhaps. Maybe. Um, I know Crucible of Worlds. Crucible of Worlds is in here. You can have <laughs> an infinite land destruction loop. You can have Field of Ruin. You can sack Field of Ruin to destroy a target non-basic land. If you've got Crucible of Worlds out, you can just play Field of Ruin from your graveyard on your next turn and do it again. And again and again and again. And people will hate that. I would hate that if that was happening to me. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, um, it's going to come in against, against the, you know, the pesky Super Friends decks, the Control decks that just don't run basic lands. And we will teach them a lesson. We'll, we'll, we'll destroy all of their lands. Uh, and then the extra nests is there because there are other decks that are going to be mirror matches or similar, like near mirror matches, those mid range matches that kind of drag out a little bit. Um, I, I would take out one of the Vivian Reeds for the Nissa for that uh, in, in the mirror matchup or the, the grindy. 
the grinding mid-range matchup. Uh, so I'd split that two and two, pretty much. Um, you could probably even cut down Vivian Reed again for something else, depending on what what their package is that you've seen. Um, we're gonna get into some games, and we're gonna do some. We'll do some best of three. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna do some. You know, I feel like I should do, should, should do some test games first. This was just a, a sort of deck tech quick discussion about the deck, about what it, what the what the deck is, um, what's in there, the sideboard sideboard options, what's taken and out and stuff. Um, it's it looks like it's you know everyone knows how powerful Wild Grove Walker is anyway, so with, with this package, it can it can I'm pretty sure it's going to do well. <laughs> um, as long as the you know the guy playing it isn't stupid, uh, this is a weird one for me. This is not my my regular cup of tea deck, I guess. That's not the right phrasing. This isn't so much a deck that I've ever really played before. Sort of land destruction. So for me, it's going to be about making the right choices and the right timings and playing the right things at the right time. Hence why I'm thinking some test games is probably not a bad idea uh, before we do that. So yeah, thanks for tuning in to this very brief deck tech for Golgari Land Destruction. Um, or you can call it Golgari Midrange, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. I think, I think I'm going to have fun playing this. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to do some tests. Test it. Test it, test it, and then we'll uh, come back. So, yeah. Uh, enjoy, I don't know, <laughs> watching the next video of me either cocking this up big time or me smashing some face. Peace.